Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. section replacement um, go back and watch the videos if you don't know what we're talking about uh, everybody that's been watching the video let's go ahead and move forward uh, what we found out is on our inner outer fender well now I want to explain that to you when you look inside the car this whole thing is an inner fender well but when you break it down it's actually two pieces so you got an inner and you got an outer part of the inner fender well. So what we're talking about here, we're talking about the inner, okay, this is the inner, remember, outer. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's the inner outer fender well on the rear quarter panel. And if you have to order one of those, that's how you want to explain it because if you just tell them the inner fender well, you might possibly run into a situation where they send you this piece back here and you don't need it. So remember to tell them you, the outer. But on our particular car, what we found is that ours is rusted to approximately right here. All right, right here where this little beveled edge is. And I'll show you that in a minute. But what I got to do is I am going to actually cut this out right here. Okay. And what I have is an other outer, inner, outer fender well. To replace that with but I don't want to replace the whole thing because the whole thing doesn't need replaced remember we're trying to save time and money here and expense and hours and wasted days wasted nights um, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to measure this out and then I'll transfer my measurement onto this one and if you look right here this is that hump I was talking about which is located right here now when you look at these two pieces you can see that there's a difference in them this is actually a bigger hump than this hump but uh, we're going to measure it to make sure that it's the same distance or possibly, hopefully, close to it. So when I cut this piece out, I'm going to actually cut it bigger. I'm going to actually go up to here on this one, and I'm going to cut this one down here. That way I'll be able to overlap this one on top of this one, and that's going to give me enough room to go ahead and adjust my measurement that I need to make sure that it accurately fits and everything's going to fit well. So I'll go ahead and take my tape measure and I'm going to hook it right on the bottom of that and it's telling me that it's approximately, if I go straight with it, straight up and down, it's approximately ten and a quarter. So we'll get our tape measure out of here. And then we'll come over here just like this and it looks like that it's really, really close. Uh, this would be ten and a quarter right here. So it looks like it's really close to where that hump is. But there's still a little bit of a difference, and that's why we're going to cut this one up here. Now, I always like to use my bright yellow tape as a guideline. Um, you see me do that a lot, and I'm going to go ahead and mention it one more time for everybody that's just catching up. Tape is a tool. Always keep a good automotive-grade uh, masking tape in your shop at all times. Um, this is three-quarter inch, and then I also keep one and a half inch. So we're going to go ahead and take a piece of tape and I'm just going to use this for a straight line because I can't see all the way in there and I want to make sure that I come straight across and I don't want to uh, go around that curve at an angle because when you wrap your tape around there what happens when you're wrapping it you're starting to go down like this and then it's like a crooked cut instead of straight across so always eyeball that out and make sure that that is properly uh, uniform to what you want to do. Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my safety wear on. Uh, we got gloves that you see me putting on right here and we also have, where's my glasses? 
I don't have my glasses. Let me go get them. That's what I'm talking about right there. One more thing that I like to do when I'm working on these cars that are hollow and create a lot of noise is ear protection. Always protect your ears because uh, later down in life, you're going to wish you did. So now that we got our protective gear on, we're going to go ahead and cut this section out. Remember, this was rusted and rotted right here. And we could probably go ahead and treat that with some type of a uh, metal prep, such as Pour 15 or something, and get away with it on a cheaper version, cheaper restoration. But uh, me being my friend Pete, I like to do things properly. So we're going to go ahead and cut it out the way it should be done and go that route. You can see by using the yellow tape, I'm using uh, my tape line as a straight line versus using a pencil or a pen or a stride line. We'll go ahead and get our air saw out to finish this baby off. If anybody noticed that right there but what I did is I took my cutting wheel on the end and I only cut through the panel that we're removing I did not go all the way through both panels that's very important so practice makes perfect and you want to only cut through the panel you're removing when you got layered panels on top of each other we'll go ahead and take my air chisel on this baby and try to find the spot weld using my spot weld buster this is not your regular average Joe uh, air chisel bit, remember? So if you don't have a spot weld buster bit, don't try this at home. And there you go right there, just like that. So the next thing I'll do, I'll go ahead and transfer my measurements onto the other panel. I'll get that welded in there. I'm going to clean my metal up really, really good so we get a nice good weld. I'm going to weld it on the inside and the outside of it to give it that nice solid fit. And then that way, once we get it done, we'll be able to grind it down real nice and it should look like factory original when we're done. school. Classes don't stop till you know everything.